It's Thursday, July 28, 2022, and today we are sitting down to film some channeled answers to questions from viewers for the YouTube channel, but I do want to remind you that the majority of videos nowadays are going on to my Patreon channel. And so on that Patreon channel, you'll find more channeling videos, you'll find behind the scenes content, you'll find um, writing work that I do that is more or less a series of journal entries, and you'll also get more of an opportunity to interact with the kinds of questions that are being asked. You'll be able to um, see your interests start to help this series take more and more shape in a way that we don't really have the opportunity to do over YouTube. So if you're interested in uh, joining that community or at least seeing what that community is like, there's a link in the description of this video. I highly recommend you go and check it out and see if it's something that's a fit for your interests. But for today, we will be answering some questions here on the YouTube channel. If any higher powers show up and are willing to answer the questions for us. So let's get started and see how it goes. Just a reminder that in order to get the energy alignment to the state where it's even comes close to being possible to hear the higher powers, you are going to see me move my hands around, you're going to see me move my arms around. As the energy moves, you might see me yawn, my eyes might move around in my head. If those are the kinds of things that make you feel so uncomfortable that you feel you are unable to be present for this experience, you can either close your eyes or this may not be the kind of channeling work that you are interested in and that's also okay. There we go. Well, we are going to start the process, or I should say continue the process that we began earlier today. I'm starting to open that door in the sky way up above all of us who are a member of this community. And as you'll notice, those of you who are a member of the Patreon, what you'll see is in these Patreon videos more and more, we are starting to firm up a definition of a group of guardian angels who seem to be responsible for the Patreon community. And I'm not sure how they got that to happen upstairs. I haven't figured out exactly how it works yet, but we can, to a certain extent, get a hold of those presences upstairs for these questions. And if there is a more relevant group of guardian angels who are responsible for a group or a community that we are representing through this video effort today, and you might think of them as archangels, that's often a term uh, people use for guardian angels who are not for a specific person but are for a group for a community for a larger um, scale if we have that opportunity I'll try to identify them as clearly as possible so that nobody feels confused so that we all understand the process that we're engaging in together there we go we're going to start to get that toroid of energy moving through the vertical pillar of the energy body really starting to create a connection between the collective and that group of guardian angels that is responsible for the collective. And we're gonna ask them if it's all right for us to present a series of questions. They can answer as many of them as they wish, or none of them at all if they don't want to, but if it's all right to start to ask the questions, and that does feel like we have a go-ahead, at least to ask the questions themselves. This particular list of questions comes from a member of the Patreon community who goes by Tori. And then Tori asks, I'm just going to put the whole list on the table and then we can start wherever the angels want. But the first question is, what does a guardian angel look like? Who assigns guardian angels to humans? Do we pick them? Are my personal angels my ancestors? And are they all from the divine and protecting me? These are great questions, and so let's send them way up through those doors in the sky. 
until we feel one of those much higher powers grabbing a hold of the end. It's almost like casting a fishing line up into a bright white space and then really testing who it is who grabs a hold of it to make sure we're not listening to the wrong kind of presence, somebody with bad intent. There we go. Okay. And now the first thing to address is probably the easiest question of, are my personal angels my ancestors? And the answer is almost never. I think it is a very convenient wish that, especially when it's loved ones that we knew who passed away during the time in which we were alive, when we knew them in their bodies, they transitioned out of their bodies. I think it is a very um, convenient and comforting thought that someone we knew is watching over us even after they've left their body. Now, that is not uncommon, but that's not what a guardian angel is. That falls into the variety of what the angels often refer to as helpful dead people. And there are a lot of helpful dead people. If you had a, a grandmother who you really loved, sometimes if you've had a sibling who passed away, if you've had someone who was close to you who passed away and you do occasionally still feel a presence that feels very strongly like them, easily identifiable as that person, and even sometimes maybe they uh, send in ideas or thoughts or feelings or what can be guided that still isn't a guardian angel. That is still just a helpful dead person. And those relationships can be complicated because for the most part, that helpful dead person is supposed to be starting their transition into the next stage of the experience. They're starting to prepare to go up into a higher dimension and start to have their post-life meetings with their guardian angels, start to get the things on the table and work through them. It's not a bad thing if they show up. A lot of times there are little loose ends that need to be cleared up before that person can move fully out of the life and into the next stage of the experience. And so if your loved one dies and appears and has a moment with you, don't freak out, first of all. Don't say, oh, go away, you shouldn't be here, because they might have something they need to wrap up. If they need to wrap something up, let's let them wrap it up. But always have in the back of your mind that this is not a permanent connection in this state. That they really do, in the reasonably near future, need to continue their process. And so don't hold on to them. And that is a very hard piece of advice to give and to receive. Because we want to hold on to them. I had a client in the healing practice this past week who had a sister she was very close with. And the sister transitioned out of her body. And this client was really struggling with this same dichotomy of wanting to continue to feel close to her sister, who she had loved very much, and also knowing that the sister has other things to focus on now, being dead. There's a lot that needs to be processed. And uh, this is a slight digression, but what ended up happening, one of the many stages of that particular healing session for that particular client was that the client's guardian angels and the guardian angels of the recently dead sister started to assemble what looked almost like a welcome basket of these little moments that had been shared between the client and the sister in this life where they were both in bodies that only the two of them would know about. Those moments that sometimes aren't even said out loud or aren't even consciously expressed in our minds, but create the bond, the connection that we share with that other person, with that other soul, with that other incarnation. And those are the moments that this client in particular and lots of us grieve when there is the loss of that other person because there's the feeling of there were two of us in the world who had this specific feeling and now one of us is gone and now I am the only one in the world who has this specific feeling and I don't know what to do with this. And so what we started to do for this client with her guardian angels being the hands on the wheel because I was not about to go rogue for this kind of work was to start to collect copies of 
those specific feelings and to start to assemble them into a collection. And at a certain point, guardian angels for other loved ones of the dead sister also were present. We also verified their identities. They also added things from those loved ones until we had what was essentially a little basket of feelings that might be useful from this life for that soul who's now out of this body. She's out of this life. She's not coming back into this life. But things that might be helpful from people who loved her in this life. Now, this had the benefit of allowing those people who had loved her in this life to contribute something to her now. And there's often that feeling when our loved ones transition, this feeling of... Um, the things we wish we had said, the things we wish we had done, the things we wish we could give to them to take with them wherever it is they're going in the afterlife. I love these guardian angels. One of them is saying this is the same practice that we see in play during the burial practices of ancient Egyptians, where they would build homes for the dead. They would put a lot of items inside these homes for the dead, sometimes living people, uh, which ethically there's a lot of gray area there. But they would give things to the recently transitioned because of this urge of, we'd like to help you. We can't go with you. Here's what we have to give. And so in this particular client session, we were able to kind of create that thing. And we were able to send it up to the dead sister's guardian angels, not so as to interrupt the between life process that she's in, but just if she needs any of those things, or if any of those things are helpful in the review process of the life, if any of those things are helpful for her to build on what needs to happen for the next life, that way they're there. And we've given what we had to give. Now, that is all on the topic of helpful dead people, which are different from guardian angels. Guardian angels are presences of much, much higher vibration. And some people say, well, is it not possible for guardian angels to walk among us, be in human lives? It is possible for guardian angels to work through the bodies of presences. It's able uh, channels who are highly, highly trained. It's possible for them to speak the words of guardian angels. It's possible for the guardian angels to even move through their body. Sometimes that's what's going on when the eyes move around and the yawning happens in this body. But no, they're not still at the level where they would have incarnated recently. They have worked through so much. They have made so many good choices in moments where making a bad choice would have been much more convenient, where they are no longer in the same level as someone who needs to continue incarnating into bodies because we have lessons. We are just not learning they're different. They're playing a whole different game. And then they're able to have the kind of consciousness that you need in order to always be playing a couple of steps ahead of that person who you're responsible for. A guardian angel, this is interesting. I hadn't thought about this. A guardian angel has gotten past the point of where what they are focusing all the time as a soul is their own personal development, where they're constantly trying to correct the mistakes they keep making, where they're constantly trying to push themselves through challenges that really only benefit their soul journey that really are only about taking them from one step to the next step to the next step and they're able to have their consciousness be at the point where of course if the guardian angels are living with integrity uh, which we would hope they would they are still going through their own challenges they are still recognizing their mistakes and correcting them but they're also able to do that um in such a way as to help the process along for presences who are not as advanced. And it's kind of like um, as someone grows older and they get to the point where they can have a pet. When we're very, very small, we cannot have a pet. We should not have a pet. We need to deal with um, not falling down and breaking our head open, not drowning in the bathtub. There's a lot of things we need to focus on when we are very small. And then as we get older, 
We can take on an animal. We can take on uh, a series of houseplants. We can take on things to be responsible for. And as we pay attention to how we deal with those things we are responsible for, we can gauge, do we take on more or do we not take on more? And it's very similar for guardian angels. There is an oversight committee, much as as we are growing up and we are testing what we can be responsible for, for the most part, we have guardians or parents who are watching out and say, I really don't think you're ready for a six foot boa constrictor. Maybe we should start with something a little bit smaller. It's very similar in the hierarchy of guardian angels because guardian angels also have people looking out for them. They also have presences looking out for them. In a lot of client sessions, what we find to be very effective is to first connect with their personal guardian angels, and then we'll try to get a couple of tiers up. We'll try to get to their supervisory guardian angels. We'll try to get to their supervisory guardian angels. And eventually we do get to a point where there is kind of a sweet spot where the guardian angels are aware of what's happening on earth. They're at least somewhat aware of the challenges of the client's life, but they also have that much higher vibration energy that means they're able to create uh, miracles from where they are. And so that really is the sweet spot that we try to get to. All this to say, if you're energy sensitive, you can probably feel the difference in vibration between those guardian angels way up there and your dead grandma or your dead friend or your dead sibling who you love very, very much. But we can feel that that is not the same level of firepower between these presences. So your ancestors do exist. They can show up and be useful in your life, but they're not the same as guardian angels. And unless the circumstances are so dire, dead people really can't make miracles happen. They don't have a whole lot of influence on the world around us. They can influence us. I don't have a lot of oomph to be able to make things happen the way that guardian angels can. So that's one quick answer, which is so funny because I we've been filming for quite a while now. And so that's the question too, are my personal guardian angels my ancestors. <laughs>